my whole life have I had the honor? Did I ever think that I would have the honor? So what? 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 I don't know what I'm going to say next. <laughs> People have been saying the most lovely thing in life. It's an honor to meet you. I've, I've waited 20 years to meet you. It's a pleasure. Don't do that. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you. Then along comes one that says, "You remind me of my grandfather." <laughs> so you've got written material. I do. I do. <laughs> I don't have any written material. Everything I say is off the top of my head. <laughs> Which has led me to a great many... You get yourself in trouble there. Yep. <laughs> Why is George the case so angry at you? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for trouble, are you? You're looking for trouble. I was just asking. Just I asking. have no idea. What's the matter with that guy? What's the matter with George? Why are you assuming there's something wrong with him? <laughs> what? You're supposed to be my friend. Why are you attacking me? I am your friend. I'm trying to get your head straight. <laughs> Why are you trying now after all these years? Uh, well, George, you want to talk about George? Whatever you want to talk about. I tell you, I don't know what's the matter with George. George has got a B somewhere in an enlarged orifice of some kind. Yeah. I have no idea what's the matter with that guy. Yeah. He, something I did has really turned him off. Well, be careful what you say because somebody out here recording your conversation is going to play it for you. I, I hope so. <laughs> so, George. I called George one yeah, day. Yeah. See, I do this show called Raw Nerve. <laughs> and I wanted him to. I know you do the show. I was on it. Do you remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> were, you, were you on Raw Nerve? <laughs> You know there's a rumor going around that you tried to drown me in Star Trek IV? I tried to drown you? Yeah. I don't know how many rumors are. From looking at you, it's obviously I succeeded. <laughs> Forty-four years I've been listening to this. <laughs> and it's getting more and more difficult to hear me, isn't it? <laughs> Wired here, we're wired here, we're wired here. I got a wire where George Decay's B is buzzing. Have you seen any good movies like that? You're in the movie and I'm not. Okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't. You were in the movie. I'm not referring to any particular movie. Oh, sure. It just casually came out of your mouth. Have you seen any good movies recently? <laughs> well, I understand the Star Trek movie is good. And I understand that you're very good. And I've even heard that it's a very good thing that I'm not in it. Anybody who's saying that, <laughs> anybody who's saying that is, 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 a, is known as a dick hat. I feel so. <laughs> Did you say dick hat? No, I didn't. Did that. you call me a dick hat? <laughs> We've reached a new level in our friendship. <laughs> 
my dearest friend calls me a dickhead. <laughs> I wasn't calling you. That was the mood. Are you aware that you just went to your own? I mean, you may not be aware, but you what came out of your mouth? Not I was not referring to you, yes. I was referring to a person who would say some terrible thing like it's good that you're not in the movie. Why are you even suggesting that? That wasn't me that suggested it. Who's it you? Let the you reason you were on tape. Play back the tape and show him what he said. <laughs> Have you Meanwhile, forgotten what you said 15 signals. seconds ago? What? 15 seconds ago you said it. You don't remember? Said what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, enough of this hilarity. Let's get serious. Have you seen any good movies recently? <laughs> I don't know why I'm not in that movie, Blender. Do you have any idea why I am not? in the movie, and you are. I had nothing to do with, with writing it, but I, I think there was some discussion about the, the possibility that you had died some time ago. <laughs> I know, I, I, how do you... The first book, yeah. I think it was the first book I wrote, when wait the minute, cat... Wait a minute, the first of how many, well, how many books have you written? 28, okay. <laughs> The most recent of which is an autobiography. What's it called? <laughs> the heck is it called? <laughs> what is it? Do you have a new book, really? Well, it's been out there a few months. But yeah. Yeah. Something about yourself? Up till now. Up till now. Up until now. <laughs> no, who said that? not up until now. Who said that? Somebody who read the book. <laughs> up till now. Yeah. Is the name of the bio. As opposed to Down Before. <laughs> now, Down Before is probably the name of your book. <laughs> Down Before, you wouldn't know how long before it would have been. But it could have been before now that I was, that couldn't have and I wouldn't be. You're in deep, you are in deep, deep trouble. Because <laughs> you're getting, you're getting mean now. <laughs> Irascible, I believe, is the word. That, that too. That too. Leonard, why aren't I in the movie? <laughs> why, why do you think J.J. Abrams decided, after coming down to the set of, um, of uh, Boston Legal, he did, <laughs> for which I am nominated for an Emmy this year. <laughs> How many times have I been nominated? No, how many times have you won it? Twice. You've won it twice. Then nominated how many times? Six, five, four. What, what's it like? What's it like to win? I've, I've never won. It's, it, it's <laughs> glorious. Like, <laughs> the feeling of euphoria. Yeah. The joy of victory as against the agony of defeat. <laughs> Why aren't I in the movie? I've been nominated four times and I've never won. Why have I never won? Even your best friends don't tell you. <laughs> Why aren't I in the movie? <clears throat> I think if you saw the movie, you'd, you'd like it. I don't know why I, I haven't seen the movie. I, it is really a mystery to me. I never saw Patrick Stewart in The uh, Next Generation. He's very, he's very upset about that, too. <laughs> he's to, he talks about it all the time. He's, he's, he's going to be here, then. Well, I, you, you'll see. <laughs> well, you know that, that uh, my wife Elizabeth and I, Patrick and his then wife, uh, were having dinner some years ago. And to give you an idea, of how little my wife Elizabeth knew about Star Trek. She looked at him, and then she looked at me, and then she turned back to Patrick and said, how can you be the captain if he's the captain? <laughs> and that's the truth. And he and I started laughing because it was glorious to meet somebody who didn't have the answer. <laughs> um, so Patrick's going to be here 
and the whole Star Trek thing is very much alive. But you and, why, and why I haven't seen the movie? Why are you holding on to me? Because I need, <laughs> because I need strength and assurance. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't seen the movie. I I haven't really had the opportunity. Uh, although Abram said he would screen it for me. Uh, Here's, here's, here's the main reason. Last night, wait a minute, did you wait a minute. Did you come in on Delta Airlines? I can't Airlines? believe it, I'm in the middle of it. Did you come in on Delta Airlines yesterday? I did. Delta Airlines purposely, because they knew you were on the plane, they programmed this. I know, they did. Right in front of you, on your face on the seat. I know. Right there. <laughs> right there. I know. Of, all you had to do was, was reach I, out I as know. Captain Kirk and press the button. I know, I know. <laughs> But they wanted me to swipe my credit card. That would have cost money. <laughs> I don't know why. I had things to do on the airplane. I have a speech to make. I have a movie to direct. But I have got work to do that gets in the way of seeing Star Trek whatever number. And you <laughs> is it true that you don't know? Is it true? Sure? Is it, is it, is, it doesn't one. have a number. Does Star Trek number? 1. It's the numberless movie. Really? Yeah. What do they call is it? it? Is it Star they... Trek. They call it Star Trek. Well, we were in Star Trek. That's right. Very serious. The right. word Star Trek comes very difficult to right. me. Right. Right. I, I can say, right. because, right. because my, my jaw clenches yeah. up because every time I say Star Trek. Right. Say it carefully. Star Trek. Star, Star Trek. <laughs> Is it true that you've never seen Cap uh, um, Patrick Stewart as, as the captain? That's funny. I thought I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take... Wait a minute. I, you won't let me finish a thought, for God's sake. Right, right, right. I was saying If that... you think it's interesting, go ahead. <laughs> These people are anxiously waiting to hear whatever you have to say. <laughs> they are, but you're not. <laughs> I was going to say, say something <laughs> funny. <laughs> everything I say is funny. I don't know. Uh, everybody laughs at everything I say. Uh, All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, thanks. Are you ready now? No. <laughs> I'm all upset. Now. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So I, I'm going to just sit back and listen. <laughs> story of our relationship. I mean, what would happen on the set all the time? I'd go to speak and he'd say, what about George Takei? <laughs> or is it Takei? What is it? Takei. Takei. Yeah. <laughs> is that the same as Decay? <laughs> He's going to hear about that, isn't he? <laughs> now he'll come on Ron Nerman. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, uh, that, um, uh, um, What's his name on the radio? <laughs> Howard Stern. How did you know I was going to say that? <laughs> that Howard Stern, Stern is offered to to referee. Yeah, you told me that. I told you that. You don't remember? No. <laughs> I didn't tell you that, Leonard, because uh, 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 Howard Stern is just offered. Let me see if I can What's get in there. <laughs> What's in there, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> ah! Problem is, they would. <laughs> uh, Howard Stern is offered to officiate at so, a discussion. That's George great. That's yeah, great. but why would I want to do that in front yeah, of Howard Stern? Right. Why not? I want to do it on Raw Nerve. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I thought Howard Stern would come on Raw Nerve and do it with See, you. that yeah. I would go for. Yeah, of course. But Howard Stern says, You want to do it on, on, his, on his radio oh, show? Oh, I see. I don't, I don't yeah. know that. Well, George works on that show, doesn't he? George Decay. Yes, I, I've never heard of him. I've never have either. Doesn't he work on the Howard Stern show, George Decay? Yeah. 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 No. They haven't heard the of him. The thousands of them listening to it, obviously. Well, you can hear from the response. I don't know. Anyway, I was going to say that. Yeah. Pretend for a moment yeah. that in, 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 in the realization of your wildest dream, okay. that you're me. <laughs> And, and you're going to go see Star Trek movie. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, you know, we're fairly well known. People look at us. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm getting ready to watch it. Okay. I'm ready. No, no. I'm Bill You're Shatner. getting ready to go into the movie theater. I'm, getting, I'm Bill Shepard. Yes. I'm walking into a movie theater. You're walking towards to the movie theater. 
the Star Trek movie. Exactly. Okay. okay. And right. there's a crowd of people because it's a popular movie. Right. You're walking towards it. Yes, I am. What are people going to say when they see you? Why aren't you in the movie? <laughs> Get it now? I got it. I got All right, it. that released your dream. You're no longer me. <laughs> sure, what a relief. Oh, that was tough. All right, should we answer some questions? Yeah, yes. Should we? You think they have questions? They're probably going to ask you why you're not in the movie. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Gunner. You haven't lost a thing. All those dead brain cells? <laughs> They're percolated. That's really good. How'd you bring them back to life? Last time I talked to you, you were, uh... My memory is still very good. Oh, that's good. What'd you say? I don't... <laughs> you know, you're a lot older than I am. I know. I don't look it, though. But... Well, <laughs> that may be true, but you are. <laughs> but four days. Four days. Uh, four days. He's four, four, four days older than me. Yeah, but, you know, the difference between us, I mean... You, you finish this thing here, you go back to bed. <laughs> I, I get on a horse. <laughs> and I ride off into the sunset. Ride to Kentucky. Right. <laughs> we, we, I'm serious, you want to do a, uh, some questions? Sure. Would that be a, a, yeah. a good thing to do? Somebody over here, is there a, is microphone? There a microphone? Are we organized in that direction? There's a microphone, somebody's pointing over here somewhere. Oh, there they are. There he is. Right Why there. isn't somebody, see the gentleman? She, Give somebody a microphone she. and somebody ask him. How many tails? Or it's a lady. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, I'm, I wasn't sure if the operation was going to work, so. <laughs> this is not going to be very successful. <laughs> what did you say? We have a line here, and I would appreciate if you just ask your question. We know y'all all love these guys. Oh, she's, so she's going to moderate it. She's, yeah, she's got the control because she has the Why don't microphone. you just give the microphone to someone to ask a question? No. <laughs> all right. Over the years, one of my favorite things that I liked uh, was watching Hooper Reels uh, on, uh, on DVDs. Uh, yeah, I hear it crystal clear, can't you? <laughs> and I was wondering. Could, could, could we get the microphone up a little closer? Go ahead. Uh, over the years, I've watched a lot of uh, uh, DVDs, and I'd like to watch all the blooper reels um, serving the shows. And I was wondering if you could tell us one of your favorite bloopers that you that has happened with y'all. Uh, with y'all. <laughs> y'all, y'all will have bloopers. Acrobats, uh, 
uh, and we, we, I, I created shows and sent them out to all the Army posts in the Third Army area, all the Southeast United States. I created those shows and I directed them. And I also directed a couple of shows at Chastain Park. And I also directed a production of Streetcar Named Desire here in Atlanta at the Peachtree Playhouse. <laughs> You're, 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 you're practically a native son. So just be careful how you, how you treat the people of the planet. <laughs> I shall do. And there are people here from other countries, and you should be careful how you treat them as well. Because you're not, you're not always a nice guy. <laughs> I am. I, I, I mean well. And if the people of Atlanta would only take me to their hearts. <laughs> They're going to love you. They're going to love you. They're going to love you. They are going to. Uh, you want to talk about your favorite blooper reel? That was y'all, the question. Y'all's favorite blooper reel? Don't mock the people. <laughs> Why don't we tell them the history of the blooper reel? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so, Oscar, you want me to start? Go ahead. Because you have the most animosity about it. <laughs> Did I, really? It was a turning point in your, in your life. Was it? Yes. <laughs> so are you talking about? Are you talking about me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> you must be talking to me because there's nobody else here, right? <laughs> Call me a taxi, will you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. Seriously, we both reach for water at the same time. You got my signal, did you? Okay. <laughs> um, gee, it's getting harder and harder to open these damn bottles. <laughs> It becomes a test of your strength. Oh, what's that? I did it! Well done. It's an issue about packaging. Have you ever noticed how difficult it is to open some packages, the, the way the stuff is packaged these days? I know. Why I used to be able to rip them apart when yeah. I was younger. You can't do that anymore. And now I can't. You have to get a knife, a scissors, yeah. a hammer. Yeah. Go ahead. What's so that hat with the hammer on? It's out, it's out there. What is that? Hammer? It's the uh, Hammer Museum in Los Angeles. My wife and I collect contemporary art, and my wife is, is on the board of trustees of the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles. So you're doing a little advertising? Yeah, a little advertising. <laughs> but that's in museum in Los Angeles. Why are you wearing it in y'all? Well, somebody is. To begin with, I bet there's some people here who have been to Los Angeles. And I would also bet Very that sometime deep. in the future there will be some, some of these people will be in Los Angeles. They will long since. I'm talking. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> some of these people might want to know where to go in Los Angeles if they get there. And I would say the Hammer Museum of the Griffith Observatory. <laughs> and go to your okay. theater. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm going to die right now. You'll okay. make the news. Don't worry about it. You'll all be there. <laughs> and, uh, and go to your theater in the... Uh, in the... Uh, uh, in the Griffith Observatory. That's right. Right? That's, yes. So you went, let, let's, let's get this straight. You, your foundation does the Hammer Museum. Yeah. And your foundation does the Leonard Nimoy Theater in... The Observatory. 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 Got anything else going that we yeah, should talk about? Yeah, the Leonard Nimoy Theater Theater in New York. Really? Yeah. Anything in Atlanta? Have you been there? I don't go anywhere. <laughs> I try to get to see that movie still, and I... <laughs> the bloopers. So, every Christmas. Yeah. Well, I want to get back to the original question. Uh, uh, definitely. Very important. Is it time to get off here? <laughs> no. All right, so, the series lasted three years. So at the end of the first year, we, we had, had all at once three years. That's all. That that's what everybody always said. All that all at once? Was it only three years? No, only three years. Seventy-nine yeah. episodes. The you rest of the episodes. And you were wonderful in seventy-eight of them. Reruns over and over and over again. Yeah, and we, we never, never got paid for. Never got paid for. <laughs> no, 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 no. Have to go to work. Go ahead. Talk about the blooper. Thanks. Why do you keep interrupting yourself? <laughs> I need the water. <laughs> Okay. So, we had three seasons, so that meant two Christmases. So, the first Christmas, the editors put together what we call the outtakes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, we'd where be playing... Door, where doors don't open and people yeah. forget their Where minds. we played the fool. Yeah. Right. Mostly me. <laughs> True to my nature, playing the fool. Yeah. Uh, and they'd be on camera, and we would think it was just our joke between make, a, make ourselves laugh. Right. 
and we thought that was funny. Right. Then the editors, who were our friends, part of the company, right. edited all those outtakes together. The funny stuff. The funny stuff. Yeah. And at Christmas, we'd sit around having a Christmas meal, saying, weren't we wonderful, and watch 10 minutes of the outtakes. Laugh ourselves silly, and realize, well, that would be burned somewhere along with the other garbage. Right. <laughs> so the second Christmas, same thing, same thing happened. Another 20, 10, 15 minutes of outtakes. Everybody laughed. Look how funny those guys are. And that was it. The series is canceled three years later. Three years later, the series is canceled. Goodbye. Sorry. Great show. Love you. Goodbye. 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 No, never we don't like you anymore. Go away. No, yes. <laughs> yeah. The show is canceled. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to hear, I'll give you my next point, then I want to hear yours. Go ahead. Six or seven years later, yeah. I'm skiing in a uh, ski area in, in uh, California. Somebody shushes up to me and says... Somebody you... shushes up to you? Yeah, it's called a shush. <clears throat> shush. I'm not a skier, so I, I don't no. know what... Shush. <laughs> shush. Shush up to you. I got it. They come up, they go, shush. <laughs> and says, have you seen... Is that like the doors open? <laughs> and that's why I kept hitting the doors with the window open because you wouldn't make the noise. Are you ready? You ready? You ready? <laughs> so, so somebody came up to me and said, "What?" I said, "Have you seen the funny film at the bar in Mana?" Oh. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. This is six or seven years later, I've gone on to other things. Yeah. Like a deep and meaningful relationship with George Decay. <laughs> and, and I said, I don't want to, and I go down to the bar, and I see this, our, our funny films, which should have been destroyed, being played at a bar. On the TV set. On the TV set. <laughs> Where did that come from? And that was my first experience with the bloopers. What was yours? How did you find out about it? Uh, <clears throat> there was somebody going around the country advertising uh, uh, lectures called The World of Star Trek featuring the famous blooper reel and charging admission to see it. And who was that person? <laughs> that name just went out of my head. I, <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Well, Somebody was charging admission. You're, you're chickening out now, are you? Yeah. <laughs> you're being politic at your age? Yeah. You're going to die soon. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> you're right, but I'm still, you know, I, I still want to be kind. Okay. Yes, there is lots of time. That's no, it's true. true. There, were people, there were people out charging admission to see something. So that was your first experience? Yeah. And my worst experience, yeah. yeah. It was not good. What did you do about it? It was not the right thing to do. But well, my, my complaint, my concern or my complaint was that it was not authorized. We were being paid to give a performance. And what was, what was happening accidentally on the set uh, was okay to record and to, and to edit and to show to us, the family, as part of our internal experience. But to take it out to public and charge people to see it. Gene was not appropriate. I, I didn't mention any names. Uh, so I complained to our union, to the Screen Actors Guild. And, and they passed a, a rule in the next contract that said that the actors, the footage that could be used was only the footage of the actors being paid to perform. And that and the other footage was not authorized. And I don't did, think it's right. And did those unknown people subscribe to that? Yeah, I, yeah it stopped. It, they it, stopped? It, yeah, it stopped. So nobody's ever made any money? off of the bloopers ever again? I can't answer that question with a positive yes or no, I just don't know. But, but, but I'm giving you the facts about what was my concern, I just didn't think it would be right. If, for example, if a, writer, if a writer is hired to write a script, and the writer is typing away at his typewriter or his computer, it used to be typewriter, he's at his computer typing a script, and he, and he does a couple of pages that he thinks are really trashy, he doesn't like them at all, and he says some ridiculous thing like, this is trash, and I don't like this, and rips it out and throws it in the wastebasket, is, is somebody to tell me to come and take it out of the wastebasket and sell it? That's what it amounts to. I had... I, Why are we getting so serious? <laughs> How did this happen? Are they're, you interested in this? They're listening. Yes, you are. Okay. Same thing. 
I understand that completely, and since I was part of it, I, I absolutely agree with you. But the same thing has happened to me on more than one occasion, where we're in rehearsal, yeah. uh, and uh, and I said, no, I, I, you know, uh, this thing should be over here. No, it should be over there. Well, I don't like this thing in the first place. Yeah. And that is lifted and played in front of an audience and played on the air. Should Rehearsal been. tapes and stuff like that, where you're in the middle of a, a discussion. It's not right. And it, 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 it's not right. No, it's not only is it not right, it's un unlawful. And besides which, it shows you in a light that you don't necessarily want to be in. No, that's right. I, I understand the audience's interest in seeing it, because it gives them a, a, a look at the, the process that we go through to do our work. I understand the, the audience. From an audience point of view, I get it. But from the artist's point of view, the actor, the writer, or whatever it is, it's not, it's not, it's not right. I, I, I agree. But there are, the bloopers are out there, they're very funny, and so there you are. <laughs> so now, will you play the blooper real, please? <laughs> It'll only cost you five dollars. <laughs> Next question. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. What? I really appreciate it. Okay. I, uh, I just wanted to make a comment and then possibly a, a very tiny, small request. Uh, well, why don't you make a tiny comment, Mark? Ask a large question. <laughs> well, my comment is that um, the iconic characters that you portrayed in, in the storylines and in the show really reach across different cultures and generations, and I experienced that myself. Um, my father-in-law, who is a police officer, um, obviously from a different time and a different generation, we don't always see eye to eye on certain things, but one of the things that we connect with together is our love of classic Star Trek. Um, he's retiring in November, he's been a police officer for 20 years, he served his community in several different ways, and my small request was, I was wondering if I could get you on film saying hello to him. Are you filming right now? I am filming right Where now. Where are you? I'm standing over here at the microphone. Okay. Hey, officer! Congratulations! What's his name? His name, coincidentally enough, is Jim. Jim. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Jim. Hey, Jim. Congratulations. Wonderful job. Next phase of your life is opening up. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, what's your question? I'm a big fan of both hey. your works, well, inside and question. outside Star Trek. Mr. Nimoy, in search of, changed my life. <laughs> and Mr. Shatner, I've gotten more enjoyment from has been than I have any record of the last 20 years. I had a question for both of you, but I'm going to talk to Mr. Nimoy. <laughs> Y'all go ahead. Don't think about me at all. I'll listen. Hope he has something to say. No, no, please do not start pouting. <laughs> I'm not pouting. <laughs> ah, don't think of this as pouting. I'm just resting. My pack came. Ah, I'm no longer a member of the pack. <laughs> I'm gonna pack up. <laughs> okay. What episode of In Search of is your favorite? 17. And which one do you think you learned the most from? Uh, we, we had a lot of interesting episodes, and, and some of them, we, we, we came, some of the subject matter we came back to several times. I think we must have done Bigfoot five or six times. <laughs> uh, we, had a, we had a very interesting uh, episode about, about telepathy. And, uh, I get it. We had a... <laughs> We had these, these special cards that are designed for, for communication of, of ideas, and, and I'm looking at a card, and there are five or six young people sitting around trying to guess what card I'm looking at. And there was one young guy who got it every time, got every card I was looking at, no tricks involved, got every card that I was looking at. And the, the, the odds against that are millions to one, millions to one. 
And none of us could ever figure out how he did it. Overhead yeah. camera, just looking down. No, 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 no. Sure. They do that in the poker games all the time. They yeah, I know that. They, they picked the poker game. Yeah, 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 I know that. I've seen that on TV. But, uh, but I, I was seriously, thinking. there was one guy who them all the time. Yeah, yeah. It was already explained. It's just impossible to do it. They just kept, kept, kept getting the card. And no, there was no explanation. No. Except that he was able to read my mind. I mean, that would be the theory. No, but seriously, because uh, those those moments yeah. are absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Did and you say fascinating? Yeah. <laughs> Just because somebody wrote a word that you used doesn't mean you own the word. <laughs> Long and prosper. I can say that anyway. <laughs> Serious say it, but it doesn't mean the same as me. <laughs> That's true, but I am utterly fascinated by, uh, 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 by what you've just said. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Did you uh, follow up with this guy? No, no, we just we went about our business. But, what? But I, but I never forgot that. I've never forgot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Guy reads five or six cards from yeah. your hand. Yeah. No way he could possibly know. No. And he's like, oh, thanks. That's great. Bye. <laughs> is that what you, is that what essentially what Yeah, you that's mean? what we did. Yeah. I would have let him What would no, you I, have? I don't know. I would, first of all, I must. You'd write a book about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would. I would. I mean, here is a guy. Yeah. Because telepathy. Why are you backing up? Why are you backing up? Why are you backing up? What? I mean, that is fascinating. Yeah. Oh, there's that word. <laughs> that drives me nuts. You're right. We probably should have explored it further, but I, but I, I've never forgotten that. Obviously. I mean, that that happened 30 years ago. Just... Jeez, Leonard. <laughs> no, sorry it's... to disappoint you. Well, it is. <laughs> I wonder if that guy would ever raise me such a big deal out of it. It's a big deal! It's part of the mystery of life. We don't know what, how that happens. You hang on to your feud with George McKay but forever today. <laughs> forever. Well, I'm ahead. serious. That is a really, that is, that's a, a, that in itself. In search of, let's go in search of that guy. <laughs> it was a young boy. It must have been about, I don't know, 15, 16 years Are you old. serious? Yeah. And you said goodbye? I think it, I think it's you should have introduced him to George. He's gone on to, to win various various poker tournaments and all kinds of stuff. I don't know. He sits at blackjack tables and beats the house every time. I don't know what he does. I don't know where he is. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> because the mystery of telepathy. Let it go. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah. God. You just went, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Edward G. Roberts. Yeah. It, yeah. it was intentional. I was a big fan of his. Yeah. You're the guy that shot my brother in the back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have a question? And Mr. Shatner, thank God somebody's addressing me. <laughs> now I feel like a lump here. I have a question about what I firmly believe is the finest work of your entire career. Whoa. Even counting Star Trek, Whoa. do you have any great stories from the set of Incubus? It's a fantastic movie, no matter what language it's in. You did that in a strange language. <coughs> we did it in Esperanto. Esperanto. Can you speak Esperanto? I can. Speak so. I have been. <laughs> Esperanto was invented, <coughs> I, I think, by George Bernard Shaw. Certainly, it was uh, uh, he had a hand in it, and it was designed to be the international language. It had Greek, German, Latin, I think, roots uh, of the word, so that all the Romance languages and other languages uh, applied to it would be at least you'd be able to figure out what the person was saying. So it was going to be the international language. That was the big deal about Esperanto. And uh, a, a guy, uh, 
Stevens or something. He uh, was a writer producer and he gave me a script uh, called Incubus and it was a very basic story about good and evil and devils and things like that. And I said, well, you want me to play the good guy? That's really good. You got the money and I'm where we go and well, yeah, here we go. And, uh, and we're going to do the movie. And a week or two before we were going to start the movie, he hands me a new script. Uh, English on one side, Esperanto on the other. You had to learn the Esperanto? Or both? Ph phonetically. You learned, I learned it from the English words and then phonetically do them. I said, why would you want to do it in, in Esperanto? He said, there's 17 million people speak Esperanto. Every single one of them is going to come and see the movie. We'll have a, an audience of 17 million people. And it was true, that's what happened. <laughs> There were two in Cincinnati and five in Chicago. <laughs> it was one up. No, he, he forgot that 17 million across <coughs> the world and most of them in Africa. But uh, this person saw that. <coughs> well, let me let me just the, the, the funny. There's the person who saw the movie. That's right. <coughs> and he doesn't speak Esperanto. So, <laughs> so we finished the movie in Esperanto. Uh, okay. And. It, it's going to go to the Cannes Film Festival. So while they edit, they put subtitles in Italian on the, on, on, on the thing. So, so now it's the actors are speaking Esperanto. The subtitles are in Italian. No. <laughs> so they invite us to come and see the movie six months after we finished it. Well, I've long since forgotten what the movie is about. I don't remember what I said. So I go into the screening room, there's a large audience, and we're all looking at this movie, and I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> I never understood the movie for to begin with, let alone... That's my story. Was, 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 no, seriously, was the movie interesting? Was it a good movie? No. It was not well made? <laughs> no, it was a movie I did. It wasn't a good movie. Okay. Well, these things are nothing for sympathy, Daniel. Even great, even even great artists like you have been involved in lesser projects. Yes. <laughs> Why can't I be involved in a major project that's like singular? Like I'll do one every ten years. Like what? <laughs> what, is, what is it? Priceline. Priceline. Okay, Priceline is a very fine product. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, wait just a minute. Wait, we're on to something here. We're on to something. Okay. Let's get Shatner. We're on to something. No, 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 no. On the contrary. On the contrary. I see your Priceline commercials. They are unavoidable. <laughs> and I don't mean, I don't mean that I would, that you're I would want to. You're jealousy, aren't you? Man? I mean, if you, no, no, no. If you're what, you're what, if you're what, if you're what, I'm talking jealousy. jealousy. He's got this regular job on the price line. I want one! But no. If one watches TV, one sees price line commercial. Okay. And I happen to think they're very good. They are. So what, what am I sensing here? What am I sensing here that's negative or about animosity? What's that all about? What's, From her? I don't know. What From him. It? You. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> Are you happy with the Priceline company? Absolutely. First of all, it's a great company. Yeah. They're very generous. They're very uh, a good product. And the commercials are funny. I've been with them almost 11 years. Yeah, it's great. I thought it was a great thing. Right. But somebody here People says... People are right. not with jealousy that I, I, that I have. This is that what it wonderful is? Wonderful company. Jealousy? Yeah. Jealousy. It's really? pure jealousy. How do, you feel about, how do you feel about the competition like Travelocity, for example? <laughs> no? No comment. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm really just asking. I'm nothing. Coming. They're nothing compared to price uh, okay. I thought I saw some strange animosity happen. Was this young whoever this person was mentioned price line, and and you made a gesture. <laughs> I didn't. I was going to scratch my face. <laughs> No, so I look. Let me. I, I really think the, the price line commercials are very good. You're very wonderful on them. You are bold and brave and theatrical and funny. 
and there's no laughing matter. <laughs> that one is, I think, is terrific. And, uh, and your work on Boston Legal is exemplary. Thank you. And you do you a great job on Raw and Nerve. You're doing some more of those? Yeah. How many more? Hey! Hey! I haven't told you. No. You are in for a thrill. Rush Limbaugh. And... Wait a minute. The head of uh, Hustler. Larry Flint. Rush Limbaugh and Larry Flint I interviewed on the same day, hours apart, for two hours. Fantastic. Isn't what? it unbelievable? Why is this thrilling for me? That's what I want to do. <laughs> Well, I do you share my, my job. <laughs> I interviewed That's all right. those guys on the same day for, 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 uh, for Raw Nerve. I bet you had a great time. I had the best yeah. time. Yeah. It was incredible yeah. to, to interview the most conservative, who turns out to be a, like a bright, brilliant mind. Oh, yeah. he's there, you know. Oh, yeah. Much of the stuff he does is for audience purposes. To, go, to garner ratings. Yeah. I mean, he's got 15 hours a week to fill. Yeah. He fills it with anything he can think of. He's looking to get attention. To get your attention. And Larry Flynn yeah. turns out to be this guy with a soul inside. He's tormented and tortured. With, and it, I got to interview them and touch. I had both of them. That's wonderful. That's huh? wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So raw nerve is like the kind of thing that you and I are doing right now. This stuff is going to be on the air pretty soon. Yeah, it's, it'll be on uh, uh, this fall. That's great. I think that's really wonderful. You don't go around talking, telling people how wonderful it was to have me on the show, do you? I do. Do you? Yeah. Actually, it was wonderful oh, to right. have you on. You remember, I, you remember I did the show? No, no, Leonard, you were wonderful. <laughs> and and you told us a story. I have to work to get a compliment here. You, you, <laughs> you, you told us a story yeah. that you told me you hadn't thought of in years. Which was? The leather shoe and oh. the whole thing. My grandfather worked in leather, and yeah. whenever I would come home for a visit after months away, the first thing he would check to see how I was doing is he put the leather He put his hand in your shoe. shoes. Yeah. yeah. It was the most delightful, yeah. insightful story. That was his way of checking to see how well I was doing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if your heels were run down or your soles were It was a great, it was a great yeah. story that you hadn't told in a to yourself even, yeah. in a long time. Yeah. That, was, uh, that was wrong. Larry Flint and Rush Limbaugh. I know! Rush Limbaugh came all the way from Florida to do the interview. Wow. And Larry Flint, head of this incredible publishing empire, yeah. also came yeah. on the set to do it. It was, it was why don't you put it on a sandwich board and walk by? <laughs> He's doing seven minutes, holding the time. Yeah. He's going to do a tap dance, he's going to play music. Ten minutes, ten, ten minutes, ten, ten. Five, five minutes, five, five, five four, three. <laughs> uh, like a, like a, you're in a, like in a fight, you know, where these pretty girls come down. Round three, 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 ten, ten, ten minutes. I want to take, uh, uh, you, you brought up the subject of, of, uh, of talk show people like Rush Limbaugh, I want to take just in about 12 seconds to say that I'm very concerned and disturbed as a service. I'm very disturbed by some of the talk show people who are on the air who are inflaming the American public. It does not help to get, it does not help us, but we need a civil debate in this country, not, not that. I, I actually, I, I actually said that to, to Limbaugh. And? Uh, he yelled at me. I said that. I'm not talking specifically. I'm not talking specifically about him, although I include him, but there are others who are even, I think, even worse in, in, in terms of just just making themselves famous by saying inflammatory and dangerous things. And I think it's, it's wrong. Well, I'd say you're absolutely right. Okay. Where were we before I got serious? <laughs>
We're talking about George Takei. <laughs> So we have two people that have been standing up here for an hour oh, to ask a question. Oh, oh, so speak. feel sorry for them, let them ask a question. Sure. Yeah, speak there. Um, I'd like to know... Wow, look at this outfit. What is that? What do you want? What's on your face? What are you looking at? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, you'd like R to It's R2-D2. She's got a beard. Oh, okay. <laughs> you'd like to know what? Um, I'd like to know, of the two of you on stage, which of you is going to be in the I next am. Star Trek movie? If you, if you tell me you're going to be, I'm going to leap upon your throat and bite you in the jungle. <laughs> no, what? There, there's, there are no plans yet for, for me, for me to be in the Star Trek movie. No, no, seriously, they're writing, they're working on a story idea right now. A long way to go before they have a script and know who they need to do or what they have in the movie. I, I, frankly, I doubt very much that I will be asked to be in it. I think that the Spock character <clears throat> has been very well established now in the hands of Zachary Quinto. I think he did a very good job. I think, I think you would, I think you would find that you would probably say the same about Chris Pine. I think he did a terrific job. And, and I think, uh, I I think this is very important, I, this is very important, I'm serious, I think you have every right to be proud of the character that you established that's been carried up and moved into this movie. Yes. Some time or another in their lives, I certainly have. 
I don't know if they're Dylan has, but I have. <laughs> and uh, and I, I think Spock has been a useful influence in that sense. I'm, I'm very pleased about that. People often tell me that, and I'm very touched by it. Thank you for the question. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm with you, Dave. I'm with you. That's true. I'm sure you've had people say to you that Crick was a positive influence in your life. <laughs> no, nobody says that to me at all. <laughs> they say, hey, fool. <laughs> no, that's not true. You've you, you, you set a, a very wonderful, positive example for people who are who get, it, uh, get themselves educated and learn to be useful citizens and to, use to be, and get to be leaders and, and, and take bold steps toward resolving uh, problems that are out there in the unknown and uh, beyond um, the, the farthest reaches of the galaxy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what I get. <laughs> They're saying Denny Crane. That's Denny Crane, some, yeah. That's some name. Uh, Fire! Give me the next Star Trek movie! No, I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. Here's the question. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to go on the red carpet uh, to the Emmy Award show. And usually the supporting actor, I think I'll be the supporting actor, uh, is up like first or second. So they're going to cut. They'll have a half a dozen cameras. Half a dozen people are up for the award, and they'll focus on all of us. And somebody whose name will be mentioned, and they'll come up and receive the award. The other people will cry. They go, oh, yeah. oh wonderful! I'm glad we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and and I am will not get it because Mad Mad and Entourage, well, they're very popular. And really? they're really We've been canceled, so we're not on the air any longer. And I'm with you, and my kids feel the same way. <laughs> and, and, but we're not, I'm not going to get it. So the question is this. Do you prepare a speech because lightning may strike? Or do you not prepare a speech, and therefore you know that you're not going to win? I so yeah. I have not prepared a speech because yeah. I know I'm not going to win it. Hmm. Except I could tell you what I would have said if I were going to prepare a speech. Go ahead, go ahead. I would say, <laughs> say it to him, say it to him. He wants to hear you say <clears throat> See, the thing about a beard is it gets in your way no matter what you're doing. <laughs> make a great plaque on the monument that rests astride the body of a dead show. Wow. That's profound. Wow. That's what I would have said. Okay, okay. Of course, if you win, you can start with, this is a big surprise. <laughs> Anything else? No, no. Well, then you can say, say thank you. Speech. Okay. I say thank you. Then yeah. what do I say? This is a great surprise. This is a great surprise. I'm really, I really didn't expect this. I didn't expect this. I didn't come prepared with a speech. <laughs> I didn't come pre prepared with a speech. No, I didn't prepare anything to say. I didn't prepare anything to say. But this would make a great plot. But this would make a great plot. <laughs> 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 